My name is Bradley Bowman. I'm Senior Director of the Center on Military and Political Power at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. You know, I think the details are still emerging, um, but what's uh, clear uh, is that we had three American service members killed and um, at least three dozen injured, uh, and those injuries of, uh, are of varying uh, severity. I've been warning that there's been uh, two reasons why we haven't seen U.S. military deaths up to this point. Um, and one is the force protection measures that we've taken, and two is luck. And as anyone knows, sooner or later luck runs out, and sadly, it appears to run out this weekend. We have roughly 3,000 U.S. service members in Jordan. Jordan is an important security partner for the United States for all sorts of reasons. The primary objective, there really are two primary objectives, I would say, for uh, U.S. military personnel being in Jordan. One is to help uh, uh, increase security cooperation between the U.S. and Jordan for a variety of reasons. Uh, you know, it's, they're a valuable security partner in a troubled region, so that's one reason why our troops are there. The other big reason, and this I think relates more to this particular location that was hit, that is trying to ensure the enduring defeat of the ISIS caliphate. The goal of the Islamic Republic of Iran here, if we're just being direct and blunt, is to kick American forces out of the region so it can more effectively control and undermine its neighbors and advance its radical ideology. That's its primary objective. And if we withdraw, we're, it's more likely to see a resurgence of the ISIS caliphate. What you'd want to say in this moment is that uh, this was unacceptable, that we will respond in a time and place of our choosing, and that the, the response will be serious. You obviously don't want to say anything, you don't want to say anything that would tip off our adversaries to, uh, to what we would be doing. But if you're going to say those things, which I just recommended, which the administration more or less has said, you better not slap these folks on the wrist, right? We've seen what happens when you talk big and then you don't deliver. Full points to the administration for wanting to avoid a regional war. But we're doing classic mirror imaging here where we think our adversaries think like we do. They do not. When they hear proportionality, reasonable, moderate, we don't want a regional war, that sounds so good in Davos. But our, our adversaries hear that as weakness and a green light for aggression. And I've been saying since October 7th that the real danger here is too weak of a response from the Biden administration. And I say with deep, sincere sadness, that explains largely why we are here where we are now. And it's really interesting. It's like, oh, we better not respond. You're gonna have a regional war. Well, depending how you define a regional war, you know, we may already have one. So the question is, how do we respond from here? And my study of history, my doing this for more than a couple decades, tells me that American weakness is the most destabilizing thing and is the quickest path to more aggression, not less.